Hey Touch Nation, and it's Nisha. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, what is popping? I'm gonna just go ahead and jump straight into it. You wanna start on wet, damp hair, and you wanna spray in a leave-in conditioning spray. And after you spray that in, you wanna go ahead and just comb it all out. Then you wanna do your side part. Um, today I'm doing the medium length side part blunt cut, and it's also a quick weave, so that's why I'm putting my part on the side. You always wanna part your part on wet hair because when you blow dry the hair after, it helps mold in your part. Molding in your part means it helps set your part, like your hair will like naturally fall that way, you know, since we blow, went ahead and blew it out in that direction. Next, you wanna go ahead and blow dry out your client's hair. You wanna blow dry in the direction that you want the hair to lay, especially the leave out area because that's the most important part. Um, just because everything else is going to be braided up. But any hairstyle that you do, you always want to blow out your client's hair in the direction that the hairstyle is going to lay. This is all dry. This is how my side part look. I kind of curved my part and it's a little far back because I like that look. Now you see me parting out her leave out. Um, this side that I'm parting right now, this is her edges. So this is where the baby hairs will be. You want to go ahead and part that out and you want to rubber band it up to get it out your way. And then I'm parting out this small little piece up here by the top bang area because we don't want to leave too much of her hair out, but we definitely want to leave at least that, you know, to cover up that top track once we get up there. Those are both of my edges area, basically. Now you guys see me parting out my leave out. Well, it's all leave out, but this is the part that's like um, where the part is going to be, if that makes sense. It should make sense. This is where my part is going to be. You see me putting the end of the rack tail underneath the hair and folding it over. That's how you check to see if you left enough hair out. As long as you cannot see that tail underneath your hair, you left out enough hair. Honestly, this is probably a little bit too much hair, but I would rather be safe than sorry. That's just me. But you have to make sure you part out both sides. Like this side that I parted is only gonna cover the left side of her head. Now you have to go to the other side and part that out so it could cover the right side of her head. And I'm basically parting out a U. I'll definitely show you guys once I'm finished. Oh, and rubber band it up too. All right, so do you guys see how I have a loop right there? That's all gonna be my leave out. That's her side part. So you definitely need your you and you need your edges as well to make it look more natural. Once you're finished, just pin everything up out of your way because you're not gonna touch that anymore until it's time to iron out her hair. So I went ahead and braided up most of her hair off of camera. For quick weaves, you only need about five to eight braids. If the hair is super thick, you need 10. Um, I do have a, a, a short blunt cut tutorial that I actually showed how to do the braiding pattern. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead. Got 29K views. I'm so thankful. And I use the end method. I don't even know what it's called, but like I put each end of my braids into the next braids. So that way, once I'm finished braiding, I only have one end instead of you know, as many braids as I have. So now that I have her braided up, I'm gonna go ahead and pin her braid up. Once I'm finished, I'm just gonna lift it straight up, put it up into the braid. I'm gonna use my bobby pin and I'm gonna tie it. I mean, not tie it, I'm gonna go ahead and push it down. Do not forget to oil your client's head. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the morning glory on. So I'm gonna put her cap on her head. You do not want to put any of the morning glory on any of your leave out areas. Do not do that. This is morning glory. It's for your quick weaves. It's like the glue protectant basically. But for your quick weave, you will apply it to the cap. Um, it helps the glue not get onto your client's hair or at least make it very minimum to where it's not a big deal for them to take it out. You want to spread that all over the cap. I showed this in my other tutorial as well. That's a little more detailed. So if you guys need extra help with that, go look at that video for me. 
um, spread it everywhere that you're going to put glue. Anywhere that you're going to put glue, you want to definitely put this stuff on there because it reduces the amount of glue that's going to be on a client's head. is what I mean when I say do not put this on any other leave out. Do you guys see like where my U and my edges is? I did not put anything on there. If you put it on your edges, you're doing this absolutely wrong and your quick leave is going to be messed up because now you have the sticky product all on your um, leave out. You guys see me tracing around the perimeter of the cap. Everywhere where I put the morning glory, I trace around the perimeter of the cap with the glue just so the cap can um, stay down and I can make sure it's like really intact and glued down underneath that quick leave so it doesn't roll up on my client. You wanna be light with the glue. You don't wanna be too heavy because the morning glory already makes the cap stick. I just like to take the extra little step. Also, do not wanna put this on the leave out. Now sit your client under the dryer for about five to 10 minutes. We are using Alley Pearl Bundles. This is from our local beauty supply store. Now you guys wanna make sure you cut off the excess cap. Cut off whatever we did not mold down, whatever we did not put glue on. Anything that does not have product on it, you wanna go ahead and cut that out. So cut outside of the perimeter, not on the inside. Be careful not to cut your client's hair when you're up here um, by the leave out and the U part, because it is possible. So just please be go slow. Make sure you have your thumb, how I have my thumb, so you can separate the hair from the cap, because it is easy to cut the hair, especially because we're using black cap, a black cap on black hair. So just be safe. Don't look at my face, Lord. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. All right, I'm not gonna show every single track that I glue because I already have a quick leaf uploaded, but you wanna make sure you measure the track against the head, which means put the track up against the client's head. However long that is, you wanna cut the scissors right there so it can fit. Then you wanna put the glue on the track and you wanna go ahead and lay it down. Again, you wanna put the track up against the head first to see how much you need. Then you wanna cut how much you need. You wanna go ahead and put the glue on the weft of the track and then you want to glue it into her head. And you want to keep doing that back to back to back to back. Um, the higher up you get in the head, the longer your weft is going to be. And then once you're close to getting finished, they're going to get back small. You just want to go straight across. But since I'm doing the side part, once I kind of get into the middle, um, once it's time to like hit that bang area, I'm going to glue with a curve. You guys, you can't really see, but... Like the left side is straight. Once you come over to the right side, you need to kind of curve your track because you want a side part bang, which means, you know, you kind of want the hair to fall in your face. So that's how you get that effect of the hair falling into the client's face. You have to curve the part once you get to the right side in that front bang area on the right side of her face. So make sure your left side is straight. When you get over to your right side, you want to curve it so it can just fall into her face. Oh, you don't want to start curving until you get about halfway at the middle of her eyebrow, her right eyebrow. If she wants a deep curve, you want to do it halfway in the middle of her right eyebrow. If she wants a slight curve, you want to start curving like right in front of the middle of her um, right eyebrow. Now it's time for me to iron out the hair. I did a super quick iron out because the hair was already so naturally straight when we bought it. So I didn't have to like take my time and part through all the hair and iron it out because it's already like 95% straight. So I just ran my flat iron through it really quick just to like straighten out the last little lumps and bumps and stuff. Now I'm just putting in all my products that I like to put into my version hair when it's time to press it just to give it like shine and moisture. If you have beauty supply store hair, you do not want to put anything in the hair if it's like a cheaper grade of hair because it'll just make it greasy and oil it out and it won't last as long as it could if you just left it natural because beauty supply store hair is not really good quality. These are like virgin bundles. They're not like raw virgin, but they're like a low version that'll probably last her for about three to four months. So that's why it was okay for me to put the products into her hair. And like I said, I'm just doing a quick pass through with the flat irons because it's already so straight. So that's what I'm doing now. If your client weave is not as straight as mine, you need to take your time and part it into sections. But since her hair was already so silky straight, I just had to run it through really quick.
right, so now it's time to blend this leaf out. I just went ahead and took my rubber bands out. When you take your rubber bands out, your part will automatically fall because remember, we set the hair earlier. That was the point of blow drying the hair while it was wet. So the part could, you know, already be set once it was time to do the side part. Once you take your rubber bands out, you want to go ahead and put your curl wax stick on the hair lightly. You do not want to put it on heavily because if you do, it'll just make the hair greasy. But this product helps the hair like lay into the weave and blend really good. And I also applied my shining spray as well. Once you put your wax stick on lightly, do not, please do not do it too heavy because you're going to be mad. Once you done did this whole little quick weave and now the leave out too greasy and you got to start all over. So make sure you use it lightly. You're just going to go ahead and press her hair out into the weave. First, you want to press the weave, the hair, the natural hair by itself. And then you want to press it into the hair as well so it'll blend really good. Um, I have my flat irons, my flat irons at about 400. You don't want to have it all the way up to 450. It's okay to iron out the hair itself, the weave, with 450 because it's just weave. But when it comes to the natural hair, you definitely don't want to cause any heat damage. So I will put that on about 400. And like I said, I'm just ironing out her leave out into her hair. Do y'all see how blended that is? So it's like, look at that. That was definitely blended. All right, now it's time to get to her edges. Um, you're gonna do the same exact thing with the wax stick and the shiner spray, and you're gonna press that as well on both sides, and then you're gonna make sure you comb it into the hair. Um, this side, I did not press it with the weave as well because it's kind of pushed back, so she's going to have edges, so there's no need for me to try to blend that little piece. I'm not going to break this cut down too much because I already have a video over this cut, so just make sure you check it out. All right, now it's time to do the blunt cut. I am going to be using clippers to do this. Um, since it's a little longer, you don't have to do as much detailing as if it was a short bob because it's so long, so most of the hair is already kind of the same length. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my left side. I mean, my, well, it's the left side to us. The left side, because I'm going to set my guide, um, I'm going to go ahead and just swipe it across how I did the first time. And then I'll go back and try to clean it up a little bit. And you just want to make sure you keep your lines, like, as straight as possible because it is a blunt cut. So you want the hair to be, like, one even length. That's what blunt cut means. Um, once you finish one side, go ahead and go to your other side. Just so you can make sure your front, your two front pieces are even. After I feel like I cleaned it up enough to where it's, you know, straight enough on one side, I'm then going to start on my next side. Using your comb to do your blunt cut just makes your cut more precise and straight rather than you just freehanding it and probably making it a little crooked. Not saying that you will make it crooked because, hey, you might be able to do it super straight. But using your comb just makes it a little bit easier to get a crisp. Like, do you see how straight my right side is compared to the left side that I freehand? Once you come to the back, you're going to do the exact same thing. Try to even out that back part as much as possible with your front section. You still just want to take your clippers. Do you guys see the difference from, like, when I freehand the one cut and then when I use the clippers? And I just sit up and cut the cape. Wow okay like when you use the comb it just makes it easier for you to get a super straight blunt cut rather than freestyling it and it might be a little you know messed up so i do see that my right side has a little longer i will fix that i'm the type of person that fix every little thing that i see i just didn't want to take too much off of one side and then you know be doomed so i'm just taking it really slow but after you feel like you got it straight enough with the clippers um, before you do any other detail, and the first thing you want to do is at least get the hair as straight as you can without doing the undercut. Once you feel like you have it straight enough, you're then going to have your client hold their head straight down. Wherever you are at the client's head, you want to have them hold their head over the opposite way. So since I'm cutting straight in the middle, her hair should be straight down. If you're cutting on the left, your client hair should be kind of angled down to the right. If you're cutting on the right, it should be her hair should be angled down to the left. Um, holding her head down is allowing me to clean that undercut. So do you guys see how she's holding her head down? And there was a whole bunch of hair that I still needed to cut. That's what I'm doing. So once you finish your first cut, you're going to hold her head down. And then you'll see all those nasty pieces of hair. That needs to be cut even more. So just because after you cut it with the clippers and it looks like it's all straight and cool, it's not. So as soon as you hold her head down, you got a whole bunch of little hairs to clean up. Now I'm doing her baby hairs. Um, I'm using edge control. 
I'm putting the edge control on her edges. I'm scooping it all in one direction. And then I cut it with the end of my rack tail comb. Baby hairs is kind of hard for me to explain because it took me about a year to learn baby hairs. I honestly, like, I used to, I didn't even used to um, offer baby hairs because they were so horrible. So it just takes practice and it takes time. You just need to perfect your craft. And if you're not really comfortable with baby hairs, I suggest you to still try it out because, like, me, I'm, I'm a natural hairstylist. Like, my mom does hair, so it's just in my blood, I guess. And, you know, most things are very easy for me to learn, but baby hairs was something that I just was not getting. And it takes time. So just be patient and just practice and just do your best. But you want to soup the hair and then you want to cut it with the end of the rack to comb like I'm doing. And this was the outcome of my hairstyle. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope you guys learned anything. I hope maybe I motivated you about the baby hairs. <laughs> I hope you picked up something from this video. Um, I do appreciate you watching my video and just give me feedback. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. It's just on our feelings. And I'll catch y'all next time.